Hey everybody, welcome to Kayla in the Garden and thanks for joining me out here in my garden tonight. Um, I hope that you found this video because you have fallen in love with gardening and you want to explore the big bad wild world of tomato growing. First off, I want to tell you, it's really tough to kill a tomato. Provided that you water it, you mulch it, and feed it occasionally, it should treat you very, very well. Okay, so now that that's off, you know, don't worry about it. You should have some success. And so go forth and conquer in your garden now with tomato growing. Um, I want to help you out and explain two terms to you. One is determinate, the other is indeterminate. Um, both varieties are magical. And so you really can't make a bad choice. It's more along the lines that you need the information so that you understand how to grow them well, okay? These are determinate tomatoes. Uh, in my garden, I happen to be growing Roma tomatoes this summer. And the cool part about determinate tomatoes, well, let me do it this way. Determinate tomatoes have a predetermined date of expiration okay eviction date from your garden that means they're not gonna grow anymore they're done they have set all their fruit and kaput okay rip those suckers out and put something else in your garden um, they will grow three to four feet tall probably maybe two feet I don't know it depends on the variety of determinate that you get um, but they are usually a set smaller height so they won't go crazy tall for you they tend to work great with tomato cages um, but just keep in mind that one major characteristic of a determinate tomato is that they put on all of their fruit within like a, a 7 to 14 day window and you're going to be really, really busy dealing with all of that fruit, but then it's done. So what I love about determinate tomatoes is that I can get them started by seed early in the year, get them planted once things start warming up, and technically in Kansas City area um, in the Midwest where I am. That's supposed to not happen until Mother's Day, but I always sneak them in early and then cover them up and take care of them and baby them when we get storms or cold weather through. Um, once you get them in and growing, um, you've got about 50 to maybe 75 days of growth until the fruit is ready to pick. And after all that fruit is off, pull the plant. It should give you plenty of time then to maybe put in a harvest of green beans right after that because you're probably pulling your fruit and your plant by mid-July to end of July depending on where you are, depending on your weather. Okay, there's a lot of variables in there so this is not a hard and fast truth by any means. Um, but then you can grow those green beans. They maybe take, I don't know, a month and a half and you could have started then some stuff for a winter garden and then wintered well into say November or December. So using determinate tomatoes can give you more variety throughout your growing season. How cool is that? Here's our indeterminate tomato. This kind of tomato has no predetermined date of death like our determinate tomato does, okay? So that means this little guy who's little right now, all right, there's this pot. He can grow as big as he wants. That could be five feet, that could be seven feet, if you've got great growing conditions, 10 feet, I mean, it's up to the plant and how well he's treated as to how big it's gonna grow, okay? So, um, indeterminate, vining style usually, all right? You do need to trellis or stake them because as I just pointed out, they can get very tall. Um, I've actually got, this is a cherry indeterminate right here. It's a Chadwick cherry. Those are very aggressive. They are go-getters. They are the Olympic champions of your garden. They're amazing. I've already got tomatoes on them, and they, um, they're they probably three times taller than anything else I've got in the garden right now. And uh, I'm winding him through the trellis here, um, and it'll support it, and it's gonna be fantastic. I can't wait to see it later in the year. Uh, so indeterminates definitely need some major support. They get very tall. They will put fruit on, well, from now, until this baby is taken out by frost in maybe October, maybe November. Um, just depends on where you live and how this is growing well. Disease will also take it out though, okay? So keep that part in mind. If you don't take care of your tomato and you let it get sick, it will go early. That applies to either determinate or indeterminate. Okay, got that so far? Excellent. Hi, Jay. 
So now that you know what indeterminate versus a determinant, there's our noisy J. Um, now that you know what those are, let's try to put it into real life gardening, okay? Think about how you like to enjoy your tomatoes. Do you like them on a sandwich all summer long? Um, do you like them, I mean, do you want to can? Do you want to preserve your tomatoes? Um, honey, how do you like your tomatoes? Cooked, raw, <laughs> roasted. All of the above? Mozzarella and basil. This is why I grow everything. <laughs> um, if you're looking to... The BLT. Right, BLTs are awfully fabulous. Off the plant. <laughs> so we do a lot of indeterminates. Probably 85% of my garden is indeterminate. But pickled. It's 2020. Thank you. Fried. <laughs> oh, he's doing his Bubba Gump impersonation with shrimp. <laughs> because it's 2020, and we are having some interesting experiences to live through, I've definitely chosen differently to um, grow certain things that I can preserve. So I'm going to be focusing a lot more on canning this year and creating sauces and diced tomatoes, all sorts of things I can can. So I've actually planted probably 40 to 50 determinate Roma style tomatoes. They are going to put all of their fruit on all at once, I'm hoping. And I'm going to be really, really busy for about two weeks canning a lot of tomatoes. Um, that works great for my lifestyle. If that does not work great for your lifestyle, then pick something different. Cherry tomatoes will deliver uh, tomatoes all season long and the bush will continue to grow and kind of get out of hand. They can totally take over a good three foot, three foot by three foot area of your garden. Um, Romas though, I mean, it, it's a small little footprint. I mean, maybe 16 inches by 16 inches, but again, it depends on the variety of Romas. Some might be bushier um, than others. So consider that when you're thinking about what tomatoes to get. Now, if you're shopping for tomato seeds in, say, catalogs, okay, they will typically say in their little description, um, like this one, it'll say indeterminate, or it'll say determinate, or, you know, other, other ones will say um, DET for determinate, or IND for indeterminate, and then, to confuse you, they'll throw in semi-indeterminate. I don't quite know what they mean by that. <laughs> I haven't ordered those tomatoes, but I would imagine four to six feet tall and will die when it decides to. So, you know, gardening is fun. It can be a great experience and it is a little bit of mad science sometimes. Um, so check that out. Um, when you are shopping in a nursery for your tomatoes, the, the tag doesn't always say determinant versus indeterminate, so you're not going to have a really good idea. What it might say is vining, um, five to seven feet tall. Uh, heirloom might be a good clue that it's going to be indeterminate. Um, old fashioned might be a good clue, although I've seen both those terms with determinate, so it, it just kind of depends. Once you start learning and growing your own and browsing fun seed catalogs where you can see all of the different names of tomatoes, you'll start getting a good idea about what is a determinate variety versus indeterminate. Okay, I hope that helps. <laughs> it's so much fun, really and truly. Getting all of the tomatoes and enjoying them throughout summer, it's fantastic. It's the best experience out there, I think. So now that you have a good idea of what determinate and indeterminate means and how to use it, go out, go make some fun decisions about tomatoes. And honestly, there is nothing more magical in the garden about, oh, a sun warmed sun gold cherry tomato right off the plant or a Cherokee purple slice with some sea salt on it. Maybe the only contender that I can think of would be a glass of cold wine in a hot muggy garden in the evening. So go out and have some fun and enjoy. Be sure to like the video if you would and subscribe to our channel. And I'm so thrilled that I've remembered to tell you this part because every time I do a video, my kids are like, did you remember to do this? So please like and subscribe. <laughs>
Oh, honey, wave hi back there. So here's our indeterminate tomatoes. Hi, honey. Hardway <laughs> IPA, Martin City Brewery. <laughs> Yummy. Oh, yeah, we do like to drink in the garden. Okay. 